Okay, boys and girls, we are now at chapter 12, Piggy Banks. Bobby Jean and I pulled our piggy banks from their side from their side by side spots on top of our bookcase. I shook mine to listen to its satisfying rattle. My pig was green and Bobby Jean's was blue. Mine had a yellow, a little yellow polka dot bow tie and his had a red newsboy hat. They were ceramic unlike kitchen mugs and not too heavy, unfortunately. We didn't have much need to spend our savings, so that's what we that's why we never cracked them open before. For all we knew, we were already sitting on hundreds, maybe thousands. We set the pigs down on the carpet in front of us and gave them each a last look. Goodbye, old friends, I whispered. Are we sure we want to do this, Bobby Jean asked. He had a hammer in his hand. I mean, this cash is probably supposed to go for stuff we really need someday. We needed that moped. We have to count it, I said. Sticks will be impressed if we get a head start on the grasshopper fund. We decided to use this as the moped's official code name in case anyone overheard us talking about it. Okay, Bobby Jean still looking skeptical. So I really have to hit them with the hammer. It's going to get shards all over the place. I reached up to his bed and yanked his pillowcase off. Here, do it in this. I laid the pillowcase over the carpet like a drop cloth. Hey, he complained. This is how they do it in the movies. I could picture it. The big moment when the hero grabs the blank, the bank and smashes it against the table. A million dollars and quarters spills out. Urges soundtrack music pounded in my head. I rolled the piggy bank over onto their sides. We stared at them ready for slaughter. This was turning out to be a quite, this was turning out to be a quite sad. What's that? Bobby Jean pointed at a blue rubber circle on the belly of his pig. Mine had a green one. There's a plug. After a few tugs, it popped right out. Coins poured into my hand. Sweet. We don't have to kill them, Bobby Jean opened his own bank. We shook the coins out and tugged out the bills with hooked fingers. We kept our piles separated with an oversized pencil. Bobby Jean's bank was quite a bit fuller than mine. I wasn't so happy about that. We got in them at the same time. After all, the Christmas gift after granddad some years back. We stacked up our dollar bills and separated the coins by type. That was the easiest way to count, Bobby Jean say. My total was $27.20. Bobby Jean had a whopping $77.46. So had he been keeping more of that change for errands, We've been running together. That wasn't fair. I'll have to keep my eye on him. Over a hundred dollars total, I exclaimed. That plus the fireworks is a really good start. Bobby Jean looked skeptical. We're a long way from four hundred ninety-nine ninety-five. And I don't think we should give sticks any of this money. What? Why not? It'll get us to the moped faster. We should wait and see what happens. Dad says, never put all your cards on the table, right? My skin flush. Why should Dad get to make all the rules? We made a deal with the sticks. We're going to get the grasshopper. He's supposed to get us money, not the other way around. I shook my head, proving our... Proving Ourselves to six, Miss showing him all we had to offer. 
Bobby Jean was still talking. Now that we know we can count our savings anytime, we can keep the banks as backup. You can keep yours, I snapped. I'm not letting you screw this up for the both of us. I snatched up my coins and started to stuff them back into my pig one by one. Clink, clink. It's just practical, right? He said. I needed to make a dramatic exit. I scooped up each careful stack of coin and dumped them into my shirt, holding up the hem like a net. I took the wad of bills into my fist, hugged the piggy bank to my chest, and charged up the ladder to my bunk. The coins poured out on my sheets, and I kept on stuffing them. Clink, clink, plunk. I glared over the railing. Bobby Jean sat in the middle of the carpet with a real set look on his face. Why would he have to shoot down my dreams? You're going to sleep with that thing up there? Sure am. You can't have any of it. My fingers shook, but I kept on sliding coins into the slot. What was happening? Why did it feel like everything I ever hoped for was slipping away. Bobby G and I got into stupid fights all the time, but it had never felt exactly like this before. Clink, plink, plunk. We've known sticks for like a week, Bobby G said. How come you want to trust them with your savings more than you trust me? I didn't have an answer for that one, at least not in words. In my heart, some kind of answer rose up. Bobby Jean was everything familiar, everything I knew. Sticks represented what was possible, all the invisible things that eventually might be seen, and to be seen would change everything. Silence fell between us as my coins dropped into the bank. Clink, plink, plunk. It wasn't the greatest thing to do, try to do, mad. It was slow and precise, and I felt stupider and more ordinary with every coin I dropped. Bobby Jean sighed and started refilling his own bank. The sound of him coming back to me settled my racing heart. All right, boys and girls, that's the end of chapter 12. Okay, boys and girls, chapter 13, A Handful of Trouble. Sticks Malone was a handful of trouble. That's what mom said the first time she laid eyes on him. He strolled in through the yard to pick us up. Mom saw him through the window and, follow, and followed us over to meet him at the back door. That day, he was wearing a cap pulled on backwards and a little to the side in shades. The same threadbare jeans and a tight gray t-shirt with the sleeves cut off. Yo, Miss Franklin, he said, what's good? Mom levered the screen door open. You must be sticks in the flesh. He popped up his shades and smiled like a million bucks. Pleasure to meet your acquaintance. His voice took on a real formal tone, but it was hard to tell if he was being serious. Hey, guys. Hey, Sticks, we said, edging past her. Mom arched her brow at us, but she didn't say. I don't want you hanging around that boy. It was written on her face, though. A canyon of disapproval folded between her eyes. We scooted out the door before the words could slip out of her. Still, the message echoed. Let's grab that gunny sack, Sticks said when we were out of earshot. It's time for the next step. We led the way to the fireworks stash. How far is it this time, Bobby Jean asked. We have to get permission if we're going to go, if we're going beyond Washington Street, as if he needed to remind me loudly in front of Sticks. 
other direction sticks answer we got a bound a boundary over there he pointed past the woods away from town toward the country road and its in endless cornfields we didn't really but we didn't need one past the edge of our neighborhood there was nothing to see except for corn for about 40 miles where are we going what are we going to find over there bobby jean hefted the gunny sack up from behind the fallen log where we stashed it you'll see sticks was forever cryptic a good spy should lean into intrigue no matter what sticks peered into the sack in bobby jean's arms we should save some of these i reckon what for light up a couple of these you got yourself a party we want the best possible trade though bobby jean said don't we sticks shrugged a big bag of fireworks is a big bag of fireworks don't you think bobby jean expression swirled into a question mark he usually got that look on his face when i wanted to do a thing that he wasn't so sure about now that we were hanging with sticks that look came around a lot more often. The whole point is to get rid of them, I said. We don't want to get caught with them. We didn't, I didn't want us to have to admit that mom would skin our highs into the next century if she found out we ever held a firework, let alone set them off. We're not really allowed to use them, Bobby Jean confessed, betraying the brotherhood. Sticks grinned with half of his mouth. No kidding, BG. Believe it or not, I picked up on that. I sure enough noticed the minute Sticks started calling Bobby Jean BG. I waited to see what his nickname for me was going to be, but he always kept calling me Caleb. If all of us only ever did what we were allowed to do, the world would be pretty would be a pretty boring place. That's for sure, I agree. The deal was to get rid of them. Bobby Jean rose. Uh-oh. This was about, this was what his face looked like when he was about to dig in his heels. Sticks read it too. I take your point about the best trade, he said. His voice low and easy. We can sell them all day, all today, no problem. He grinned that salesman grin and clapped Bobby Jean on the shoulder. Let's rock and roll. We follow sticks through the woods till we hit the country road. He led us all the way to an intersection where the paved road met a dirt road that disappeared off into the corn. Check this out, he said. At one corner of the intersection sat a rusted old pickup truck with a for sale sign in the window. Beside it was a dusty looking riding mower with a matching sign. Beyond the fields of half grown corn, a farmhouse jutted up against the landscape. Sticks patted the nose of the riding mower. Thing of beauty, eh? Not really, at least as far as I could tell. It was nothing special. A riding mower, like some of our neighbors had, except older and broken. I squinted, trying to see the magic. I was missing. Maybe Six just had a thing for green automotive paint. Uh, Bobby Jean said, ever the master wordsmith? Six laughed. I'm kidding. It's just a means to an end. You'll see in a minute. We kept going along another dirt road until we met a chain link fence festooned with keep out signs. On the other side was a small dirt, dirt lot full of random objects. Lots of car tire tires, machine parts, slouching garage bags, rusted out car frames, along with plenty of things I couldn't name. What is this place, I asked. Kind of a junkyard, I guess you'll call it. Scrap metal and whatnot. 
is this the place Bobby G's face was red from exertion? Those fireworks weren't exactly light. You think we can't we can't sell the fireworks here? I know a guy. Sticks hooked his finger over the edge of the junkyard fence. Sticks always knew a guy. And right ahead of us, on the other side of the fence, we were steps away from knowing a guy too. Isn't this trespassing? Bobby Jean worried aloud. Nah, Sticks said. It's a shortcut. Feels wrong, Bobby Jean said. Something doing wrong feels right, and vice versa. Sticks countered. We're going to see the guy who runs the place. It's, not, it's no big. <clears throat> this exchange should have given me pause. Instead, I said, get with the program, BG. And he did. Okay, boys and girls, that is the end of chapter 13.